This, func this uh, video is going to talk about functions. Functions and subprocedures are very similar in many regards, and they both allow us to break our program up into pieces. And, and so it's really appropriate to talk about them both together at the same time. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, code here that we're going to be exploring. Um, again, I'm using a main subprocedure here. Again, the name is just completely arbitrary, but it's a good one. In this particular example, we're going to have a f we're going to use a function that will ask the user to input a number, but it's going to specify what the range is for that number, and it will check to see if the user's input is within that range. And the user has to continue essentially entering a value until they get a number within that range. So this is a sort of an error checking uh, user input routine and uh, it could be used in lots of different contexts within a program of course. So what we're going to do is we're just going to declare a few variables here, a variable for the user's input and then two for the max and min values we want to allow. So here we're going to go ahead and put those into variables. We wouldn't have to put them in variables but I, as you know, like to put everything into variables. And so here's kind of the important statement so far in this program. Instead of using an input box, we're going to use our own function, and I've just named this function get user number, and we're passing in two arguments here, two values. We're passing in the minimum value and the maximum value that we want to allow the user to enter. And once that comes back, uh, it stores the value here in the user input variable. And then you'll notice that this is a sub procedure call to just display that on the screen, nothing fancy. So let's go ahead and take a look at the function. Functions are fairly easy to write. You've, you've seen some examples of that with the find last row function. Um, and then I don't think I've done any others. But it starts with the keyword function. And you'll notice at the end it puts the word end, the words end function down here, kind of like end sub. Then we have the name of the function. So that's pretty simple. And then we have the parameter list. Now the parameter list is very similar, almost in a sense, it's exactly the same as the parameter list in a subprocedure. So there's really nothing new there. Um, you declare by. I, I I like the idea of using by val, so I suggest you do that. You declare the name of your variable. You specify its data type. So here we have a variable called small, and it's a long. Then you have a comma if you have more than one parameter. And here we declare the second parameter. Now the difference between a function and a subprocedure is a function is going to return a value. So since a function returns a value, on the end of the function heading, we need to specify the data type of that returned value. So here we're just going to return a long, so we say as long. So this is very different, so stare at this and make sure you're clear about what's happening. So you start with the function keyword, then the name of the function, next your parameter list, and finally then the data type of the value that will be returned from the function. Could be a string, could be a double, could be a long, integer, and so on. Could be a range. We declare a variable here for the user's input and then we want a do loop because we're going to execute this loop as long as it takes for the user to input a value within the range. So essentially if we look at our do loop and we look at the loop control at the bottom, we say do loop until the input value is greater than or equal to small and it's less than or equal to large. So that will make this loop continue if the user types in a value outside that range. So we have our input box right here and notice in the input box we prompt the user and we say please input a number between small and large. And so they know what they're supposed to type but we still need to check it. So we have this if statement that basically says if the input value is less than small or if the input value is greater than large, then we tell them that the number is out of range. And it comes down, hits the loop. The loop test is not true, so it'll go around executing at the top of the loop again with another input statement. So this is a fairly small example of the do loop, and it's a really handy example of the do loop. And so this loop will continue until the user types in a valid number within the correct range. Well, once the user has entered a valid number within the correct range, it falls out of the bottom of the loop. And the very last thing we need to do then, and this is very important, and so stare at this line for a while, we need to assign a value to the function's name. So you'll notice that the 
assignment is assigning to something called get user number. Well, that's the name of our function. So we take whatever the value is that we want to return from this function and assign it to the function name. Fairly simple idea. You can kind of think of the function name as a variable, and you can assign something to that variable. So when that value gets assigned to that function name, that is the value that gets returned, and here is where the value would get returned, and it would then be in turn assigned to that variable. Once it's assigned to that variable, it comes down here to this display input subprocedure, and it gets passed down to that subprocedure. Let's take a look at that subprocedure. So here's the display input subprocedure with one parameter, the value, and we simply do a message box and display that value on the screen. Notice the difference here with the subprocedure. There's nothing after the subprocedure to specify the return type because the subprocedure doesn't return anything. So let me give you a few uh, examples you can work on to write some functions and see if you can get those working. So here, here are a number of examples. A function very similar to the ones you did earlier with the Celsius and Fahrenheit, but this function takes in a Fahrenheit value and returns the Celsius. So it's all done in a function, and it, the function name would be 2 Celsius. You could just say message box 2 Celsius, put a number in there, and it'll call the function, return the value, and print it to the screen. And the similar one here then for 2 Fahrenheit. The next function would allow the user to call roll dice, and you can specify how many dice you want to roll. You could say one die, and of course you get back a number from 1 to 6. If you said two dice, you know, if you call roll dice and pass it 2, you should get back a number between 2 and 12. Now, you can't just do rand between 2 and 12 because that's not how dice are rolled. You'd have to roll two dice, there'll be a 1, 6, and add them together. So you'll have to think about that. Probably it sounds like a for loop would be appropriate for that. This next function allows you to ask you to pass in a number, and it will sum up all the values from 1 to that number, and then return that value. So if you passed in 10, it would sum up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and pass that value back. Hmm, that sounds like a for loop also. And finally, this last one, a little bit more interesting, asks you to pass in a number, and it will return the largest number that when it's squared is less than or equal to the number that's passed in. So for example, if we passed in 95, 9 is the largest number that you can square that's less than or equal to 95. Because of course, if you went to 10, you'd get 100, which is not less than or equal to 95. This sounds a little bit like a do loop to me. So give these programs a shot, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.